test, everything's good. Test, test, test. Everything is fine. So let's go. All right, you guys, welcome, 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 welcome. I'm a little late. I was talking to my compadre, Dimitri K from the Dimitri K Show, which you guys can catch us on tomorrow, actually, on Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Sunday when, when you get a chance to uh, see us. But uh, welcome to the Rehab Radio. I am Donovan Sadiq, also known as the Recovering Democrat. A lot of stuff that is happening in the black diaspora and as we're talking about that the, the diaspora what i want you guys to do is go and do what i did if you want to know what's going on in with with within the diaspora not only in the united states but around the world go to the african diaspora uh, news channel app download that um, you can go to african diaspora news.org become a member do the annual membership like I did, and you're going to get great stories of what is actually going on around the diaspora. Um, it's Saturday today, and I'm telling you, I stayed uh, in my bed, and I was at the on the African Diaspora News Channel on YouTube, and I was like catching up with what what's going on in Africa, in Asia, and you know places where uh, you know we're getting this information. How many of you guys know that the World Court? has cited and uh, with South Africa in regards to uh, Israel doing what they're doing and they've asked Israel to stop the genocide that is going on in uh, uh, Israel or uh, the Gaza right now. So again, uh, that's something, notice you didn't hear any, any word of that in the United States regular media. So that's something you guys can do. African Diaspora News Channel, org or African Diaspora uh, app. You can get it on Apple Store and Google Play. So please go ahead and, and do that. Download great videos from Demetra K, Brother Phil Scott, Juan Gail, Vicky Dillard, and a host of other people that are you know uh, throwing stories out there that you know you would not even hear about. Because what happens to them sooner or later affects us and vice versa. Right? Right. So here we are, you guys. Here we are. All right, we're going to talk about, real quick, there's a lot to talk about, but what we are going to talk about is your girl, the one everybody was, oh, believe all women, and all this other stuff. I'm telling you guys, this proves what I've been saying for years, okay, at how different men and women are. It is a known fact that men are more logical than we are emotional. Women go by emotion first versus logic, how they feel. And how do you know that? Because sometimes when, fellas, when, when you guys are talking to women, and let's say you're at a bar, or you're just out there just talking at a coffee shop and stuff, notice that a woman always says, well, I feel, well, I feel, I feel that this is this. I feel that this is that. Emotion. I feel. When you're talking to most men, what do they say? I think. I think. I think. Logic. So you have this lady collectively known as the Brick Lady, and she has been arrested and bonded out uh, on a $10,000 bond, which means she put up $1,000. And uh, this is the woman that basically shit on black men and had the the, the femisphere. Um, oh, by the way, I'm watching a great game, Notre Dame versus, uh, is it Iowa? Who are they playing? Notre Dame versus, no, 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 Notre Dame versus um, Connecticut. Very good game. Isn't it amazing that the uh, college, women's college is a lot more popular than the WNBA? And if I was a lot of those college students, I would stay in college for as long as I can to get to get some of that uh, NCI money, whatever they call it, whatever that money is. Um, some of them are millionaires already. So stay in there because you go to the WNBA, you'll get cut in the preseason and that's it. You know, you got to go overseas somewhere and, you know, and do what you can do. But anyway, this lady said that a, a black man hit her with a brick 
and black men stood around and you know did nothing about it even though if you look at the video there was women in there that were saying what happened what what went on whatever and everybody basically shit on black men and even some of your major news networks there's a uh uh a news show in houston they had to retract and apologize a whole bunch of people had to apologize uh for their credibility in the aspect of uh what actually happened. So we talked about this happened about four months ago. So for four months, just like the Asians did to get their Asian crime bill, you were going to blame black men for something that never actually really happened. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go. And here comes the feminists. They're going to decide, but she was hit. But in what context was she hit? She was hit because she hit somebody first. She hit somebody first, and that person was defending themselves. Now, you guys know, if you guys watch the Demetri K show, and uh, when Demetri and I get into it, I am not, and I was not raised to not defend myself. There, that, that shit about you should never hit a woman, that is bullshit. That is total bullshit. I never believed it. I will, I will never believe it. Because there does come a time where you have to put your hands on a woman. And I, and I say this all the time. What do you do when she beats your mama up? She burns your house down. She kicks your dog. What do you do? Just let her just walk away? For, for me, those are the three main reasons I will put my hands on a woman, no questions asked. And I was raised by a widowed mother. So don't tell me all of that, you know, oh, you know, no matter what she does. In this case of this lady... Uh, uh, Rhoda Rhoda and the story just kept changing and, and that's why sometimes we have to like pause before we do anything and wait till the facts come out and you got simps out here like Dr. Umar that is still doubling down on uh, you know the facts the facts have come out we've all seen the report okay this was a grift. This woman has a propensity of grifting. And now she's grifting women. It's not more, more so men. She's grifting women now. But I bring up Dr. Umar because I think he's a grifter too. Years have passed. There's no school. But he has money to be on all of these podcasts and shows and all this other stuff. But he has nothing to show for everything that he's doing. Do I agree with some of what Dr. Umar is doing? Yes. But... I know a grifter when I see one, just like I know these, these BS pastors when I see them. Dr. Umar is, in, is, is no different because your, your proof is in your pudding. You know, it is not my responsibility to build your school. That's what you wanted to do for the community. So get it done. So get it done. But no, you keep begging and, and trying to shame people into uh, giving you money so you can go over here and go over there and go over there and yet the school's not open yet. So that story is going to come out probably down the road and, uh, you know, you guys are going to see once again. You know, it's amazing how people could uh, be like these pastors. You know, it sounds good, but there's nothing behind it. There's, 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 there's no substance behind it. And that's what a lot of these people do. They know how to speak. They know how to... Uh, use key words to get you uh, revved up with the theatrics and stuff. You know, the brother of Pan-Africanism, but yet you don't, you haven't done anything. You have done nothing substantial but talk. That's all you've done is talk. And you're not telling us something that we don't already know. But anyway, back to Miss Rhoda. This woman... Uses keywords like I'm a mother, I've got a child, uh, I'm a woman, I'm a black woman. But if you go back to her page and, and you look at her videos, she is one of the first people to talk bad about black women. These are one of these, these people that come to this country from other countries and then they want to shit on black people when it's convenient. But then they're black when it's convenient also. When are you guys going to learn? Stop supporting these people that don't deserve or have earned our support. This is why we can't get reparations because these people who have a colonial uh, a colonialist mind, 
colonizer mindset, because they, you know, they come from a country that has been colonized to where they think the colonizer is right. We shouldn't get reparations. We shouldn't do these things. And this is what's gelling the thing up. She's black when it's convenient, but then she's quick to uplift her Somali heritage and all this other stuff and blah, blah, blah. But she's quick to laugh and talk about you black women. That's why I always tell you black women, you are ridiculous when you run around here with your hair hat on and the way your trans look that, that you're looking when you're beautiful the way you are. Men deal in reality. And what do I mean by that? Men deal in reality because I'll, I'll give you an example. I look at myself. I am an average looking man. I'm of average national height. I'm 5'10". I have an average career, uh, average house, average car. I'm, everything about me is just average, but I'm a man. So that kind of gives me a little bit of insight. But you've got women running around here that they all think they're tens. They all think they're Beyonce's. And I don't really think Beyonce is all that because she looks like a typical girl from the South, red, you know, red bone girl from the South. I don't know why Beyonce is held up as this uh, person of beauty. I, you know, I've always liked uh, Kelly Rowland until she started having self-esteem problems herself. But you got these women that keep telling themselves they're all tens. They're all tens. They're all tens. Delusion. Most men deal in reality. You know, uh, if we're going bald, we shave our heads. We, you know, we, you know, we, we, we just deal with what, what we deal with. But this, whim, this woman, Roland, it is obvious to me, and maybe you guys will disagree, and maybe you guys will agree. I don't know. But have you ever had that friend that they're, they're good people? And I believe there's good in, no, well, not everybody, but in most people, there's good in most people. But she reminds me of people that when they go to a club or they get a little alcohol in them, they turn into somebody else. You know, they, 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 they just turn, you know, it's kind of like me, you know, like uh, I don't really drink like that. Um, but. I already know that when I do drink, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more, I'm not a violent drinker. I'm more susceptible. I'm really loose. I get like really relaxed and I'm just loose, but I'm a different person. I'm not who I am. You see what I'm saying? And in her history, she has a history of violence. You know, she's always fighting somebody. Um, she, she's one of these people that likes to have a good time, but she doesn't know how to regulate the good time and it gets her into trouble. She has history back in mini Minneapolis. She has a warrant that was out there or whatever it was. I could be wrong. Whatever it was, she was, did something in Minneapolis. And this was a couple of days after she so, so-called got hit with a brick. And, you know, I know I got people that say, well, at the end of the day, Donovan, she still was hit. So where was she lying? She was lying in the fact that it was a brick. People donated to her at the fact that it was a brick, not a water bottle. And again, if you use your logic, if you are hit with a brick, the damage that is done to your face would not be what we saw in her pictures. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what a scammer she is. There was an actual woman in South Africa, I believe, that was hit in the face with a brick. Notice the damage that inflicted in her face from a brick. Now, I know you got these people, these, these physicists. Well, it depends on the angle and the, the weight of the brick and this, this, that, and how it comes at you, whatever. Please stop. A uh, big shout out to uh, Accountability. What was her name? I forgot her name. And please forgive me. Uh, but she's the one that pretty much stayed on the story. Accountability. I forgot her name right now. I, I'm so sorry. But um, and she was, you know, putting it out there. Logic, people. Logic. When I saw the video initially of this woman claiming she was hit by a brick. Instead of calling the police and seeking medical aid immediately, 
she live streamed it and blamed black men. That isn't consistent with somebody who just got assaulted. Logic. Logic. You don't, you're not even thinking of live streaming something when you just got injured. But knowing her history and how she had done this before, using the keywords, and of course, villainizing black men, that's what she wanted to do. She just wanted to villainize black men because the Asian, Asians got a crime bill off of it, remember? Joe Biden gets elected president by black people. And then all of a sudden, these attacks that are attributed to black men on specific Asian people, no other group was attacked in general, but these Asians. You can get a bag off black people, black men, black women. It's just, just blame a black person. And all of a sudden things happen and things get done for you. Everybody believes it. Do you know what's really sad, you guys? Is when a black person in the diaspora uses these type of tropes against another black person in the diaspora. But where's the apology, ladies? I haven't seen very many. I've seen maybe one or two apology videos at the most, but I haven't really seen a lot of apology videos. Because feminists don't apologize when they know they're wrong. Has feminism made our community better? No. Has single motherhood improved our communities? No. Has promiscuity of our women and being free to exploit themselves and pound town and brown booty hole and all that other stuff improve the image of black women? Weaves and trans look and all that other stuff. Has that improved anything within our community? But feminism is a success or is it a failure? Oh, we got to be liberated. Liberated from what? Liberated from what? At the end of slavery, we were released together, black men and black women, and, we, and together we were able to build Black Wall Street all over the nation until the white man came back from World War I and saw how prosperous, prosperous we were and decided to bomb American citizens on American soil, the only group of people that ha that has ever happened to. We're so prosperous being strong and independent. We're so strong and independent, ladies. What is the fastest growing, what is the fastest group of uh, people being incarcerated in the United States? Black women. Black women. 18 billion dollar hair industry that is 80% if not 90% controlled by the community the Korean community that benefit off of 18 billion dollars of our money that we support that industry that we're not getting that money cycle back in our community how is that working out for us oh but they won't let us in whatever 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 here come the excuses $18 billion a year, if we could just take that money and keep it within our community. But what about the men? But we're not talking about the men, damn it. We're not talking about the men. We're talking about the women. We're not talking about the men. Men are held accountable all the time, no matter what they do. They're locking us up for not supporting children, all this other stuff. So we're not talking about the men on this program. And if you're here for me to talk about the men, this is not the program for you. It's just not. We're talking about the women on my show. And once again, what do they do, fellas? 
They go to deflection. Well, what about the men? The what about is Answer my question. Has feminism improved our community or, is it, or has it helped destroy it? I believe it's helped to destroy it. And you've got these people that with a colonizer's mindset that come here under the premise of everything that the civil rights generation worked for and use it for their benefit so they can get a bag. We have to stop trying to save everybody else and start saving ourselves. The facts have already been put out there, you guys. The Houston Police Department has put the facts out there and said that this was not true. She was not hit by a brick. And did you guys notice her story changed? The very man she came to the club with, partied with, and left the club with, supposedly attacked her. But then when she spoke to the police officer, which by the way, she gave her friend's number, that's kind of suspicious. Why would you do that? When she finally filed the police report, whatever, then it was an Uber driver who had trafficked other women in the car that she thought she called that tried to kidnap her how did you guys miss that? At first it was this guy, but now it's the Uber driver. And then the guy that she was partying with became the Uber driver. Logic. You got to just take your time and put it together logically, not emotionally. No, a man did this. A man did that. A man built the civilization that we enjoy today. A man built the phone that, that you're holding in your hand watching this program. A man built the computers, built the sewers, built the houses, built everything that you're enjoying. Where's the lie? Mm, mm, mm. It's a shame the way you mess around on the men. It's a shame the way you hurt us. Are all men perfect? No. But are, are women perfect? No. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman is now facing a major felony. And uh, she's trying to spin it. She hasn't made a statement since she bonded out. And my friend Demetra Kay said, why, why did she, she run or didn't show up when she was supposed to show up because I guess down in Houston, no matter what you do, they're going to bond you out within an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. And my friend Demetra was right. This woman was bonded out, you know, within a couple of hours of turning herself in. Her court date is March 5th. She will be arraigned, March, not a court date. She will be arraigned March 5th. So she's got to come back on her own recognizance and, uh, We'll see what happens there. Either she will make a, a plea or we'll go to trial and we'll see how, see how it is. But as we know, you guys, when, you, when you're going to make these false allegations, and this is what, what bothers me about it. When you make these serious false allegations of an assault, I don't care if it's a sexual assault, a physical assault, uh, you know, any type of assault like this. This is dangerous because the real people that are assaulted may not get any help because now people are going to be second guessing, should I help this person? Is this a skit? Is this woman just acting out or this person just acting out or whatever? So real victims get hurt by this when you make false accusations. So in my opinion, ladies, you guys should be number one in criticizing and chastising this woman and any other woman or any other man or woman that does stuff like this. It's going to hurt real victims. And I'm, 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 I'm uh, glad for Queen of Accountability. She stayed on the case. She did what she had to do. But I knew it was bullshit from the get-go just based on logic.
just based on logic. I knew it was bullshit. Anybody that had any type of basic general science or watch CSI would tell you things weren't adding up. You're going to go to one of the most musty, dusty, crusty clubs. And I don't know what the club is. I don't care whatever the deal is. But what I'm saying is by musty, rusty, and dusty, it's humid. It's hot down in Houston. It's a small club with a bunch of booty and ass uh, dancing around or whatever they're doing. And you got a mask on your face just showing your eyes. That's suspicious. And then you have a history of doing this again in the past. Look at me. I'm a mom. If you are a mom, and I believe you are, I really feel sorry for your family and your son that you keep saying that you have. And I'm glad. Thank God nobody's seen him on any of your Internet videos, whatever. But for, for, for to be a mother and to act the way you do is, is disgraceful. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. If my mother acted the way this woman acted, I would be calling Child Protective Services on her. And like I said, I don't know her situation with her, her children. I don't care the situation is, but it, I, I, it seems to me she doesn't have her son uh, with her. So I'm going to assume uh, her son or her child is with the father. Thank God. Thank God. Because now this woman is looking at a couple of years because it's a felony in if she's convicted or if they go to trial, if she's convicted. Hopefully um, she can plea and they can work something out. But she does have a history of scamming and being scammers. And she even said, you know, there's nothing wrong with scammers, whatever. You know, when it, why is it that when it comes to the negative stuff, she attributes that to black people in America? You guys go back and watch some of those videos. If she still has them up, if she hasn't blocked you guys or whatever. It's a disgrace. She's a disgrace. So, again, um, we got to uh, be very, very cautious and we get all the facts before we come to a decision when it comes to things like this. This is serious accusations and we shouldn't take it lightly. We shouldn't take it lightly. The report is out. I don't care what you think you believe or what you think you know or whatever. The report says what it says. Uh, GoFundMe has done what they've done. So obviously, this is a scam. Because if it isn't, why, why did GoFundMe refund all the money to everybody? Why is this woman being charged? I'm not saying she's guilty. I'm not. Everybody has to have their, their day in court. But obviously, there's enough evidence there to charge her with a crime. And Queen of Accountability, we thank you for holding uh, this, this woman accountable. And we're going to see what her story is. If she's got a lawyer, and I hope she does, uh, she needs to remain silent until she's arraigned and, and or if she has an, a, a court date. But ladies, gentlemen, please do not be quick to judge if you don't have all the facts. As we know in the modern day, if something like that actually happened, there's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. And according to the report, she struck him first. Who is him? Not the Uber driver, the guy she came to the club with. We got to be more careful, you guys. We just got to be more careful. So anyway, um, yeah, that's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. But again, delusional women, delusional society. Uh, weed, the, the, this, this weed that everybody's smoking now is one hell of a drug now. People are just delusional left and right, but there are going to be some women that they're going to defend it, and it is what it is. There are going to be some simp dudes that are going to defend it as well. Facts don't matter. So if you guys think uh, uh, MAGA is insane, sometimes you got to look at yourself. Donovan Sadiq, I'm the Inland Empire Informer, also known as the Recovering Democrat. You now tuned in to Rehab Radio. We're going to see you guys on the next one. Talk to you guys then.